During this period of instruction, we're going to go over the basic how-to on making the termination ends for our RG6 quad shield coax cable. First step is we're going to go over the tools needed uh, to do the job here. Uh, you're going to need uh, a basic issue crimper. You're going to need a stripper. This here is also a flaring tool, uh, just in case you're needed. We'll go over the use of this in a little bit. You're going to need your standard pair of cutters. You're going to need your universal RG6 ends. And for outdoor use, uh, you're going to have your rubber boots. We'll go over the use of those and try putting those on here in a minute. And also um, some sort of colored electrical tape uh, to mark the end of your transmit cable side. Up next, uh, we're going to show you uh, a few examples of what wrong looks like as far as the ends on termination. Okay, so a few examples of what bad looks like is a few have been demonstrated here. You're going to have, uh, the ideal situation is you want about a sixteenth of an inch passed on your center conductor here, on your center core. Um, this here is an example, this is a, a good quarter inch long. Uh, this is considered too long and it can actually damage your connection when you go to screw this on. Another example is the opposite of that and it's going to be to where someone's taken a pair of dykes uh, or some sort of a cutter after they have made their end and they've actually snipped it down into and shortened the actual center conductor. Another example is someone who has made their end and they put it on and they've crimped the connection however they've had to try and wrench and force this on and you end up with a bunched uh, section on your rubber here because you've actually had to press that down but the main concern is and you can see in the center here is you end up with a, a crescent moon style shape there where you've actually cut into the center dielectric the dielectric is the white uh, rubber uh, foam part in the middle the last one we're going to show you real quick is before you actually get to the connector is when you actually make your end you want to make sure that you do not have any debris or anything wrapped around your center core. Here's an example where a few of the mesh braids have been wrapped around and were not cleaned off. So you want to ensure that those have been pulled back and not in the way when you go to make your end. Up next, we're going to actually go through and terminate the ends for indoor and outdoor and show the proper way. All right. We're going to go ahead and uh, properly terminate a, our quad shield coax uh, for indoor and outdoor use on our VSAT systems, whether it is a current SAS system or the AVL system. One thing I would like to note is that on all terminations uh, for our satellite systems, they need to be a 100 foot section of coax. Uh, if it is a few, she, a few feet shy or a few feet more, that is okay, but uh, 100 foot is the preferred amount. I did want to point out one thing to help in assisting with this is that there are foot markers uh, on the actual coax every two feet. So the first step we want to do is take your pair of cutters and just make a slight incision in between here and all we're going to do is peel this apart. All you're going to need is about 8 to 10 inches. Uh, you can pull it back a little bit further if that works for you. And one thing you always want to make sure to do is because unless you just cut the coax, you always want to make sure you have a nice flush end. So if you receive this cable or if you're not sure how long it's been that way, just go ahead and cut the ends off so that you know you have a nice flat surface to work with. Okay, the first thing we want to do is work on our outdoor cable. And the first thing you're going to want to do is put a rubber boot on the cable before you actually begin. To make this easier, um, if the cable is dry and the boot is also dry, sometimes it can be a little hard to get that on there. So if you want to take some sort of a lubricant, you can do a quick spray to make this the next section a little bit easier for you. But you're essentially going to put this on and you're just going to work this back and push it out of the way and we'll come back to that. So the first thing you're going to do next is you're going to take your pair of strippers 
put those on and get this flush with the wall. And you're just going to rotate this around three or four times. Some things techs will do is they will try to go several ways one way and then go back the other way. Uh, this is not needed. So once you're done, you're going to be able to put, twist and pull this off. You'll have your first section which pulls off and this gives us our quarter inch here. And then you're going to have your second section which gives us our second quarter inch. What you're going to want to do is just kind of thumb back and you're going to want to keep this metal mesh. A common mistake is to cut this mesh off and we want to make sure not to do that. So just kind of get that out of the way. As you can see here there's one little strand that didn't get quite cut right so you can trim him down to size. Once you have those all thumbed back, we're going to peel back just the first layer of foil on our dielectric. So you're going to find that layer of or the first layer of foil, and you're just going to pull that back. The easiest way to do is to then take your pair of dikes or your, your cutters and just make just a small little niche. And then from that point on, you can actually take this and just unwrap it, and it'll unfoil all the way around. So you end up with just a piece of foil. You're then going to take your thumb and just fold back that second layer of wire mesh. You do not want to cut this off. This is what is used for the structural support for the actual connector. And this is what gives the cable its rigidity. So you, once you have all of the braids pushed back, then you're just going to lay, lay them down. And for this particular demonstration, we're going to go ahead and use our strippers with this optional flaring tool and we're going to show you how to use this. All you're going to do is simply put the end of the coax into this, this stripper and slowly slide it on over and once you get to this you're going to actually gently just push in with a slight twisting motion. Once this has been accomplished simply, simply work it back off and all it does is put a slight gap in the actual coax. Next, you're going to take your RG6 universal connector and you're going to simply slide this on except the common misconception is what one of the wrongs look like is when it shows the uh, crescent moon or part of this dielectric is cut off. What you want to do is from your standpoint when you go to put this on you want to look at it and make sure you have a full moon or a full circle from within the actual connector. Once you do that it actually simply just snaps right on you just give it a slight little work to make sure to not over push but it simply slides right on with almost no effort at all and when it's in position you'll see that the actual dielectric your white center is actually flush with the inside connector you then take your crimping tool Simply place it inside the actual crimping tool and you're going to give that a squeeze. And you have now made your first connect connection. If you look closely, you have about 1 16th of an inch just above the actual tip of your actual connector. Uh, rule of thumb is, is if you can run your finger or your thumb over the top and barely feel the top, you're good to go. If this is your transmit side, you're going to want to take some electrical tape and simply put a little bit around. But now that this is done, this is a demonstration for our outdoor, you're just going to pull your boot back forward and this will go on once your connection has been put on place. We're going to go ahead and move to uh, our indoor again. If, you're, if this is an old cable or you're not familiar with its end, go ahead and cut that off so that you know you have a nice flesh bus base. You're going to take your strippers, place those on, and you're simply going to give it a good three or four turns. Remove that, and then remove your end piece. You have your first quarter inch.
and then your second quarter inch with the remaining. You're going to thumb this back, making sure to keep that wire mesh as it does provide the rigidity for the actual connector once you have pressed it on. Once you have that first layer back, you're simply going to look around the foil there for that first layer. And once you find the lip, you're going to give that just a slight pull out and then take your pair of dikes or your cutters, give it just a little nick. And from that point on, you can just unwrap that foil and it'll come all the way around. You're just going to thumb and pull back that second layer of wire mesh. and just make sure it's evenly distributed and pulled back. The flaring tool is optional. It does help some people, some people not so well. If you don't like to use the flaring tool, when you're going in this particular step, just kind of use your thumb and pull back. And this serves as the same function as if you were to use the flaring tool. When finished, you're simply going to fold down your wire mesh, ensuring that you don't have any wire or dielectric at your center core here. You're going to take your RG6 universal connector here, and you're going to go ahead and place this on the end. You just want to look at it directly head on and look down through the center of that connector and make sure you have a full moon. And it's going to snap right on there. All right, so once you have your RG6 connector actually popping on, then you're just going to go ahead and push that down. It doesn't take much force. You just want to be careful not to over push. We're simply trying to get that dielectric flush. All right. So once we have the dielectric flush on the inside connector, we're going to go ahead and take our crimpers, place this inside, and clamp that down. And again, we have that sixteenth of an inch you can barely feel over the top there. And the reason this is important, and I stress that you want to look at it directly and get that nice full moon when you're going to put that connector on, is, is that is what makes it easy to put on. Uh, a lot of people will try to simply blindly take a connector and from the side place it on and they just start trying to wrench it on. The problem with that is that it tends to cut into that center dielectric, causing you a much harder time to get that on and an improper replacement of your connector. So once you're done with your coax, if this is say your transmit side, you're going to want to take a, an electrical tape or a zip tie or something and you're simply going to mark to ensure that it's known what side is your transmit. This has uh, been a representation of an outdoor connector with your rubber boot and an indoor connector. And that concludes this period of instruction.